It's the beginning of 2024 and I realize it's been about two and a half years since I've done a proper studio tour video. I've made a lot of changes around here in the last couple of years, some big changes and some small changes. So I want to share all the behind the scenes of how I've got everything set up in here from the video switcher I use to all of my cameras and lighting and even some of the fun things like my battery charger wall. Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki. If you're new here, I host weekly live streams where I share what's new in the world of live streaming and live video production and I answer questions about how to use gear like the A10 Mini and other video switchers. Before we get started looking around, I wanna make it clear that I'm not making this video to show off and I do have quite a lot of gear here that will make you say, nobody needs that much gear at a home studio. And you are absolutely right, nobody needs as much gear. You can make great content with a small fraction of what I have around here. I've been doing this for a few years, so I've naturally just accumulated a lot of gear over time. And you also might say I have a case of gear acquisition syndrome. But another part of it is that my goal here is to be able to test out live streaming gear and create tutorials on how to use it. And that's actually where a unique challenge starts and part of why I've expanded to have so much stuff in here. So let's say, for example, I wanna make a video about an A10 Mini. So if I'm sitting at the table here recording a video, I need a camera for my main angle and at least a camera to show you what's on the desk. I'll need to record those two angles, but then I also wanna show you how to use the A10 Mini by running actual video feeds into it. So now I need these two camera angles to also be fed into the A10 Mini. And since I mainly do live streams on the channel, I actually can't rely on just using a single camera and moving it around. I need more angles to show more things. And it quickly spirals from there and I end up needing a complicated video distribution system in the rack in order to send cameras to different devices that I'm testing. If you're not making videos about video switchers, you may not actually have these problems so you can get away with a lot less gear. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is just all to say that I'm not saying that everybody needs to buy everything I have in here. My goal with this channel is to help you make better live streams, starting small and growing your collection of gear when it makes sense. So hopefully there's a lot of things in here that can make you a more productive creator and feel free to revisit this video in the future to get some new ideas for your own studios. And of course, I wanna give a big thanks in advance to all the viewers and supporters of this channel. It's thanks to every one of you that I'm able to continue to build out this space and continue creating content. Okay, so let's start with a quick overview of the space and talk about how I use it. I have three main areas. There's my main streaming desk, which I use for the weekly live streams. This is really optimized for me watching the chat for questions and to keep an eye on everything in the stream. I also have this table on the side, which is where I film most of my videos about various products. This is set up with cameras at a few different angles to be able to demonstrate different products. I also have a breakout panel on the rack next to the table where I can feed copies of any of these cameras into these HDMI cables that I can plug into various gear that I'm testing. The third main space is on the other side of this curtain, and this is my normal working desk. This has an ultra wide monitor and I can either use the Mac mini here or plug in my work laptop for meetings. On the other side of this wall is the garage storage area, as well as the network closet. So let me go grab my little vlogging camera and let's start taking a look around, starting with the streaming desk. All right, let's start here. So this is what I'm normally looking at while I'm streaming. The camera is back here in that teleprompter. And so the view you normally see is something like this. So let's go through everything that's on this desk one by one because there's an awful lot here. Let's start with the two cameras. So I've got one camera back here in this teleprompter. This is a, all my cameras are the Lumix BGH1, little box camera. You can see it tucked back there. That's the main camera and I also have an overhead camera which is just right up here. I actually don't use the overhead that often at the desk but it is useful to be able to show things that are on the desk like if I'm showing what's on an iPad and I didn't want to share the iPad screen itself. The teleprompter is a relatively recent addition to the studio. I got this when it came out and then waited a couple months to actually install it but so far I've been pretty happy with it. For the streams I have my chat on here so you can see this is just showing what people have been saying in the chat. So I can click on messages in that and also see it, uh, a big message when I click on one. So if I go and click on a message like this, it'll show it to me really big in there so I can very clearly read it and see who, who sent the message. The Elgato prompter, the one weird thing about it is that it is only connected to a computer. There is no HDMI input. So it is a USB device. It's connected to a USB hub back there into the computer as a second monitor. So essentially this is just a second display. So I can just go ahead and like drag windows up there. I like to have the full screen browser there for my chat. I mentioned all my cameras are BGH1. I actually have a video about how I actually got all of these at a quite good discount. So I did that a couple of years ago and I've been pretty happy with it so far. One of the nice things about the BGH1 cameras is that they all have, uh, are able to be controlled from an app on the computer, which is super handy when I don't wanna be running around behind things to adjust 
things like exposure or white balance. So I can just go ahead and click into any of these cameras and tweak the settings, do autofocus and things like that. Okay, so let's move on to lighting at the desk. There's three main lights for this shot. I have a light over here. I've got one that's up there. And then I've got a hair light from the top. So this just gives it a nice even light over my face as well as a little bit of a highlight up here so that I stand up from the background a bit. Another relatively recent change was I added this monitor, which meant that light had to go up a little bit higher. I think it's working fine. I'm not 100% sold on it up there, but I do like having the extra monitor there. Speaking of monitors, let me explain what's going on with all the screens. So this is my computer screen. This is actually connected directly to the computer, which is back in the rack there. So that is connected on a SDI to HDMI splitter. So the SDI goes into the ATEM and the HDMI comes to this monitor through a fiber HDMI cable. This is so that it's low latency, no delay. So I'm using the computer and it feels normal when I'm here. The prompter is a second monitor for the computer. And if you go into like the display properties of the computer, you'll see it actually looks like a second monitor. The other monitors are connected to the ATEM. This is the main multi-view. This is what I'm normally looking at for a stream. It's showing me what's on the air. It's showing me my other camera angles I can cut to. And these I usually change depending on what I'm doing. So I'll have like a super store. So if I have remote people coming in or testing a device, I'll put it over there. The monitor up here is a secondary output from the ATEM. And right now this is set to multi-view two. So this ATEM, it's huge. I can have multiple, multiple multi-views in it. I actually have up to four. So multi-view two is just showing me four big windows with four of the, the four MEs. So I've got the preview of what's about to go down to program. ME2, ME3, and ME4. I mentioned this is a relatively recent addition because this is something that I have been trying to do more lately is to use all the layers in the ATEM better. So I think having it up here always visible will help with that. It's been only about a month or so, so I haven't had too much of a, of a sense to see if it's actually working. The other monitor up here is showing me the web presenter stream. So I stream from the web presenter. That's a rack mount device in the rack in the back. This is the monitor view of it. So it's showing me things like, am I on the air, off the air? What's the bit rate that it's encoding at? How are the audio levels, which is really important. So I can tell whether my audio is good. And actually right now, for example, it's show me bad audio because the wrong mic is on. So if I go right over to this mic, now I can see that it's actually, the audio levels are hitting you know, yellow and barely up into the red at the desk here. And the last screen, which is not exactly a monitor, is this. This is a special little device that is monitoring the audio signal from the stream and it's showing me how loud it is. So it's a good visual check. I like this little view of it that shows me history over time. It's a good visual check to see if my audio is actually working. Other two things I have down here, two iPads. I don't always use these during the streams, but they are here. They've been living here for the last couple of months. This one is usually just running Cytus Link, which is the thing that controls my lights. So I can go ahead and just turn all my lights off by tapping on the button. And all except one is one lost its pairing a little while ago, but the rest of them are still are still there. So I can turn them all back on and everything just restores to normal. This one is uh, another iPad that I use for mostly, I guess, just testing, testing various apps. Right now, this is the app called Live App Pro, which I was showing the other day how you can use it to play back videos or even draw over your live stream. So you can go ahead and pick this one up and then just start drawing things and it'll actually output that into the ATEM, which is pretty cool. I've got a little stand over here for my phone. This is, I don't use my phone during the stream very often, but this is a little MagSafe charging stand. So it's handy to just have it there in case I do need to pull up my wireless iPhone camera or something like that. The main thing I'm using to control the stream during the stream is this stream deck. This is the brains of the show. Like everything I do is usually on the stream deck. So this is the main page where I can change the different camera angles from here. I've got my sort of pre-roll, show the map, start the stream, end the stream buttons and background music. I've got a couple other ones I use to configure SuperSource. And then this actually does a ton more stuff in here. I've got so many pages in here. For example, this TV button. This will actually change what's showing on the TV that's in the back of my shot. So I can say, okay, I'm gonna show the, the map right now, but actually maybe I wanna show my logo, or maybe I wanna show the multi-view or the program or any of the multi-views. I can change what's on the TV from, from here. So that's nice and quick. Speaking of changing what's on the monitors, 
there's another page in here called monitors, which lets me change what's on the most common things for what's on the various monitors here. So I have this monitor, which I mentioned is a multi-view, but that's not the only thing it can do. Right now it's multi-view one, it could be multi-view two, it could be program feed, it could be the Apple TV, which weirdly is off right now. Uh, and that's so that if I needed like a second screen for my computer, I could airplay to the Apple TV and then have a second screen. I could see uh, if I want to check focus on a camera, things like that. Uh, and same with this upper monitor. So right now this is multi-view two, but I can again change it to show either the third multi-view or I could go to the web presenter status or things like that. So it's super handy to be able to just switch what's on these with the press of a button. That's thanks to everything being routed through the ATEM that's in the back. Hidden behind these monitors, you can kind of see them peeking out. I've got two little desk speakers and these are so that I can actually hear what's going on on the stream minus my voice, which is a whole thing that I should really do a whole video about. But essentially I have an audio mixer that is doing multiple mixes. One mix is what's being sent back to the ATEM. So that's got my microphone in it and the sound of my computer, sound of any video players I've got going, sound effects from OBS, things like that. And then I want to hear everything on the stream except my own voice. So I don't want my own voice to go out the, the speakers, obviously, because it would be feedback and you would hear an echo. So for this one, I can make a separate mix, which includes things like my computer sound or the video playback or stuff from uh, OBS. And I drop it down pretty quiet so it doesn't feed back into the microphone. But you know, if I turn up the microphone, you'll hear the feedback pretty quick and nice little, oop, there we go, nice little echo there. So I can just make a mix of the audio except for my mic here. One other note about the monitors here, because I mentioned that these are, my computer's back in the rack, which as you can see is kind of a long distance. All the cables actually run along this little track along the wall. They're hidden reasonably well, and that is too long for most HDMI cables to go. So actually uh, what I've got here is this one is on a fiber HDMI cable. That one's on a fiber HDMI cable, and then these two are on SDI cables mostly because I just started recently adding fiber HDMI to the mix. So these are on SDI cables with converters around the back. And that way I can get all the, all the video signals from the farther distance. So from the computer, it's HDMI. From the ATEM, it is SDI. And interestingly, because the teleprompter also needs to be connected over USB, that means I actually have to have a long USB cable, which is longer than some of the, even the active cables worked. I tried an active cable it was about 30 feet long and it just did not work well at all the screen was flickering a bunch so my new solution was to get a fiber usb cable connected to a usb hub that's sitting back there so the usb hub sits back there and that's plugged into the teleprompter and uh, also this little sd card reader which i'm very happy with little sd card reader mounted to the other side of the table and that just gives me a quick way to pop an sd card into that slot which is then actually available to the computer that I'm using here. Let's talk about how all this is mounted. So I'm gonna go around to the back here so you can give, give a look from the back. This one is mounted to the desk directly, but everything else except the camera is mounted to this single pole. My cable management is not super great, but it's gotten a little better. So there's this one pole that has the, uh, this arm up here and all these arms hanging off of it. Some of them are two segments, some of them are three segments. The three segment ones let this go farther out. Uh, I've got a little the bi-directional converter hanging off the back here. So this is holding up the two monitors, four monitors actually, and even the light. So this light over here is actually just clamped to this arm. The overhead camera, I was having trouble with some of the other uh, mounting options I've used in the past, and this has been working really well. This is actually another one of those monitor arms and it's going straight out. So you can see the three segment one, which get, gives it a good distance, and that has made it much more stable. The other one here is the arm for the mic. So this is a two part arm. It's clamped here kind of weirdly. This is made for a desk, but I'm using it sideways. And then it kind of sends the mic out there. So you can see the mic gets, and ends up pretty close to my face there. You might've noticed that as I bumped this, it kind of wiggles. And what was happening is as I'm sitting at my desk using my computer, even just the motion of my arms on the computer were causing this to wiggle a little bit. And 
with this camera also attached to this arm, it would actually wiggle the entire shot and you would see it move. So this is a relatively recent change. This is now just on a pole by itself on the floor. That way, even if the whole contraption moves, the camera is stationary. And that's actually helped a ton. So let's pack that back up, hide the mess of wires with these little curtains and get back around and continue on. So most of the time I'm streaming from this desk and this is the shot you're seeing on stream. And I'm looking at this. It gives me a good way to look at the comments and see all the angles and stuff. But if I want to do demos of products, there's not a ton of room left on this table. So I have a whole separate set for that. So let's spin around over here and go over to the demo table and walk through all of this again. For this, you're going to have to excuse the giant mess of stuff in the back. I will explain more about that later. So let's just focus on the clean parts, which is this. So first of all, I have another stream deck. This is actually not connected to my computer. This is connected to the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi has two stream decks connected to it. In order to make that work, there's a USB hub on the Pi and it's connected to both of these. So I can go, I have the same buttons here. I can control the show just the same way here as, a, as when I'm at the main desk. As far as cameras go, I've got another BGH1 behind that teleprompter there. And I've got a couple of cameras on the side for side angles. I've got one there and I've got one over here. We'll come back to the head on the stick later. This gives me a nice, shot of my face close up. And then if I cut to the other ones, you'll see they are close ups of what's right in front of me here or a side angle. Uh, this one's set to kind of a wide shot right now, but I sometimes zoom that one in also. For lighting over here, it is similar to the desk. I have a big light just off to the left and then a smaller one off to the right. And I'm actually trying something new, which is to not use the one on the right. And instead I I uh, have moved this one over a little bit closer to the camera. It normally has been farther over there, which makes a, it actually gets in the way of the room more, but I'm exper experimenting with just a single light now. So let me flip this around and show you the difference here with uh, one or two lights. So I'll just go ahead and turn off that light on the right. And this is the new lighting that I'm trying for this set. This I think looks better than having the two lights on the side of my face, at least for here. Um, I, of course, also have a hair light, which you can see up on the top of the ceiling there, and that's giving this little highlight up here. Um, I also do have an overhead camera, so same idea here. This overhead camera is positioned pretty much straight on top of whatever I'm demoing here, so that overhead shot looks like that, so I can show you a close-up from the top. It's another BGH-1 mounted to this pole. This whole rig, I'm actually really happy with the way this works. This is on a single rolling stand and it's got a power strip there. It's got the audio interface poking out here. Then I've got a teleprompter up here with a camera behind it. Keep going up, we've got a little bracket to do the 90 degree with a pole extending out and that gives me the overhead shot as well as a microphone. The microphone is on a little arm here to be just higher than the frame to get as close as possible to my face without being in the shot. All these cables, again, one of the reasons I love these BGH1 cameras is there's only two wires going to each camera. There's this ethernet wire and an SDI cable, and that's all it takes. Ethernet carries network control as well as power, and that video signal goes over the SDI. And I've bought special flat ethernet cables and super thin SDI cables. None of my distances are far enough that that matters, so it all works great, and this makes it a lot less bulk everywhere. Um, I also went and got a white XLR cable for this microphone just to keep that wire mess a little bit cleaner. This light is also mounted to the same type of stand. So I've got another rolling stand with a pole and then I've got this, this mount here that sticks a little stick off to the side with a ball head for this camera. This setup works pretty well. It gets it just far enough away to be able to position it and out of the way of this. And then the light of course is on top of that. All my lights are now Amaran lights and that's so I can control them all from the app. This camera is just on its own little mini stand, so a little mini roller with a pretty weak pole, which is honestly, I should probably replace this with something a little bit stronger. You can see it's wiggling and I have to constantly stabilize it when I'm doing a shoot, if I ever move it. But I do like having it just on wheels so it's easy to move around. And again, just it's all on two, it's all just two wires for everything. So it's really easy to just roll it around. And if I wanna get slightly different angles, off to the side of the table, we've got this computer screen. So this is actually not a computer screen. This is running out of the ATEM, so I can again change what I show on there. So I go, go to my stream deck, go to the monitors page, and this is the table monitor, so I can 
show my computer if I want to use my computer for working on scripts or, or doing research or whatever, but I can also show the multi view and show all the angles here, or I could show the Apple TV close up, or I could show ME1 in case I want to do, again, checking focus of a camera. I usually have it on the computer just because that's, I use that most often here. Same with the teleprompter though, I can choose what's going to show on that teleprompter with these same buttons. So I can again have my computer if I want to do read a script off of a Google Doc, or if I'm in a Zoom call or something, uh, I can go full screen on the program. If I'm just recording, I usually like to look at myself in the teleprompter when I'm doing that, unless I'm reading a script. Or I can show the web presenter for a stream so I can check the audio levels as well. Super, super handy to be able to switch what's on all these screens around here just with these buttons. Oh, I should probably mention how this monitor is actually mounted. You might notice there's no clamp on the table here. This is actually hanging off of this Veripole. So this pole is just suspended between the floor and the ceiling. And I got a couple things mounted to here. Here is the back, so you can see the monitor mount is clamped to that, holding, it's got a visa plate here, just holding the monitor here. The light is also clamped to that, as well as this camera. This camera, mm, I don't use it that often, but it's a shot of my desk from that angle. So I'll just kind of turn it around here to show you. And it's a way to just show what my desk looks like when I'm streaming. It's a little bit high, honestly. I think I might change it, but it's easy enough to move around because it's all on this pole. The pole is great. One of the other cool things I did recently is I added this little power strip to the corner of the table. And this is really handy because I'm often doing things like testing different gear on the table here and I need to power it somehow. So rather than having all the power cords just like dripping off the end, I can run them into power bricks here and it's a much faster way to plug things and unplug them instead of reaching down to the floor every time. So that's been a really useful upgrade. I also got this sleeve to be able to keep all the cables a little bit neater when I'm doing these kinds of shoots. So that instead of just a giant mess of cable, there's just one mess of cable. And then it turns into a giant mess down there. Don't look down there. Last note I should mention is this recorder. So my microphone at the desk is actually running an XLR cable all the way back into the mixer in the rack, but this one's different. And that's for two reasons. One, because this whole pole has actually only got a few cables that run back to the rack. There's really just two camera wires and then there's the two ethernet wires and SDI for the monitor. I didn't want to add another XLR wire, but I also want to be able to record directly from here. I shoot most of the videos from this spot. So what this has set up is the, the microphone actually goes into this audio recorder, the Zoom F6, which is a 32-bit float recorder. I really like this thing. Uh, you can stick an SD card, hit record, and it records 32-bit float audio, which is fantastic. That sends audio out into the camera, and the camera brings the audio over SDI into the ATEM. So if, you're, if I'm streaming from here, you're actually getting the audio from the camera's feed, not from the microphone directly. Which, already, which also means it's already in sync. You don't have to sync it up later. So if I'm here and I'm recording something, I can record 32-bit flow audio here, which gives me more flexibility to adjust it in post. So that's the reason that I have that recorder there. Okay, so I've got a ton of cameras around here. So where do they all go? Well, that takes me over here to the rack. All the SDI cables end up in this rack plugged into the ATEM. This is the ATEM Constellation 4ME HD, not, not 4K, and all, all the cameras and all the other video inputs are all connected into this thing. I've got a bunch of other stuff in this rack as well, which I can go through one by one, but we'll start with just the, the cameras going into there uh, here. Also, the outputs of the Constellation go to the monitor. So I showed you being able to switch what's showing up in the various monitors around here. That's because all that routing is happening in the Constellation. I used to use this video hub, which is just a router, not a full on mixer. And I've taken it out of service for the last year or two because the constellation has replaced it essentially. However, I'm starting to fill up the inputs and outputs here. So I may bring it back soon or get a bigger one. We will see. Okay. So let's go through this rack one by one, starting at the top here. This is the Blackmagic dual monitor. SDI monitor thing. It's These are not high resolution screens, as you can probably tell, the text is almost impossible to read there. They're not great, but I've had this for years, almost 10 years at this point. Um, I did paint it white, which makes it look a lot better because I do not like their old gray. So I use this, uh, again, I can choose what's showing up here from the ATEM, so I can use this to just keep an eye on things myself, or if I want to keep an eye on what's like coming in on a remote stream or what's 
uh, what a certain camera looks like, it's really easy to just change that. Uh, I'm not using this, but I left it in here for now in case I want to bring it back. That's the Video Hub 20 by 20. And then the brains of everything is the ATEM Constellation 4ME. Next, I've got two devices in a blank. This one is the web presenter. This is the actual thing doing the stream. As you can see, streaming is off right now. Uh, this one is a HyperDeck Mini, the new one. And that is actually now what I'm recording most of the videos on. So I'll often just stick an SD card in here and hit record. Or I'll use it for playing back things like the test clip. I have one free spot on the rack on that row. Um, probably not free for much longer. Moving on down, that is the other HyperDeck, the new HyperDeck uh, HD+. That one actually does support 4K. And this is something I've started to experiment with in the last month or two. I now actually have my camera that's at the table running HDMI into here at 4K. You can see it's actually got a 4K signal coming in right now. The cameras I have only do 4K over HDMI, not SDI. So that actually works out fine because I've got the HDMI here. Or if I want to, I can switch it back to SDI and record something from the, the rest of the mix. So my experiment is, can I use this to record 4K videos, either publishing to, for 4K or just to downscale? Moving to the right, this is the Ultra Studio 4K. I'm not using for the 4K part of it, but this gives me dual SDI outputs from the computer. So this is connected into the computer. This is where all my chat comments show up and all the graphics that are a part of the, the web graphics. So OBS is actually outputting to this device. Let me go ahead and show a, a comment really quick. So when I show a comment, you'll see it pop up on the little preview there, and that is outputting actually both key and fill layers into the ATEM, which means I can do graphics with proper transparency much better. Now we've got the patch panel. So this is, a bunch of these are going in and out of the ATEM, but a couple other devices as well. The four on the left, labeled out 16 through 19, those are four outputs from the ATEM running through SDI converters that are tucked behind it. I actually just add these little color-coded zip ties to it because at the other end, once the cables come up to here, I want to be able to see which one is this. So now I can be like, oh, that's, that's the third one. It matches with that little yellow down there. So this is all running out of the ATEM, so I can choose what goes out of each of these ports, and that way I can send a copy of my main camera or overhead cameras or whatever into the devices that I'm testing. So if I have it rigged up here to this, where I've got one of them going here, one of them going into this, I can choose which things are appearing in each. Like right now I have the table camera coming into the uh, capture card, going feeding a pass through into the director mini, and then I've got a copy of my computer screen here as well. And this is just a great way to be able to quickly test this and build these layouts super fast while also having a copy of the computer screen over here as well, of course. Next up, network. This is just a network jack going into the network switch that's behind the rack. This is just a connection to my, to my main network so that I can plug in things on the table and give them a wired connection. The red jacks are the chaos network. Now this is a special thing I've been working on. There's a, a actually a whole separate computer in there that's a router. And this is so I can mess with the network and do things like add packet loss and simulate slow connections while testing devices. I've been I've used it for a couple live streams already and I got a lot more plans for that coming out this year. So stay tuned for more on that. Um, I just expanded this so I have a few empty slots now because I had just filled it up. So got a couple empty spots for more more room for later. That's just a USB-C pass through from the constellation. So if I want to plug my a computer on the desk here into this and give it a webcam out, I've got that there. That audio Jack is running into the mixer down below, which we'll talk about in a second. And that's so I can plug in wireless mics and things into the mixer. I've got a output HDMI out from the HyperDeck Plus. I've also got HDMI out from the HyperDeck Mini. And that's just in case I want to run a 4K signal into something on the desk, because that's the only way I can get 4K out of anything in this rack. These three are just running into USB into a power brick in the back to give USB power to things on the desk. And then these three over here are inputs into the ATEM. So right now I've got, for example, one thing connected, which is the output of the Majorwell Director Mini running into the rack. And that way I can see the Majorwell Director Mini screen here and bring it into the stream and record it or stream it, things like that. Okay, right below the patch rack is this brush panel to run wires through uh, to make it just look a little bit cleaner. And then I've got this kind of empty space, which I'm not super thrilled about, but it's mainly because the Pearl Nano is not a rack mount size, and then neither are uh, is this hub, this Thunderbolt hub. So 
In Pearl Nano, um, I don't use it all the time, which is why it's powered off, because it actually makes, it's actually one of the louder things here. So when it's on, it's the thing making the most noise. Uh, so I leave it off unless I'm using it. But this is also running into the, into the ATEM. This is an audio interface connected to the computer. Again, a relatively recent addition, but this runs into the computer and then this is actually connected into the mixer down there. And this gives me a separate way to bring an audio mix into the computer that is a submix of the main audio. So I was using this for Zoom calls during the New Year's streams. So if you're curious about, about that, you can take a look at those, those recordings. Um, this is a Thunderbolt hub. It gives me SD card slots as well as um, headphone jack, which I never use, but I do use the USBs all the time. So I plug in things like the wireless mic USBs here or plug in SD cards to read them. Um, and I actually have an SD card reader in the Ultra Studio up here too, but I find myself often needing two SD cards in the computer at the same time anyway. Things like I'm downloading a really long recording from the HyperDeck that's like 60 gigs, while then I have B-roll on a camera that I need to download, so I'll pop it into the second SD card reader. Down below is a power strip. There's like eight ports on the back of this. It's kind of a waste of the front rack space, honestly, and I should probably move it to the back and just rewire it. But I do, it does give me this one front outlet, which is nice because, well, I guess now that I have the ones on the desk, I don't really need it, but I was using that one quite a lot. So I should probably just switch that around and regain that one rack, one RU space here. Below that is the audio mixer. That is the Behringer X32 rack. This thing is great. I am a big fan. I It's way down to the bottom because I never actually touched the buttons on it at all. I interact with it entirely from the computer. So it's honestly way overkill for what I'm doing here because I'm not like mixing a full band. But the reason I got it is because of one really important feature, which is that this supports digital audio over coax cable called MADI. And essentially what it means is that some of my audio channels that are in the ATEM, so things like the camera or a HyperDeck or a wireless HDMI receiver or the Apple TV, they actually get pulled into individual channels in this mixer. So if you look at the labels here, it'll be things like a HyperDeck or Apple TV or the ProConvert NDI. And those devices often don't even have analog audio outputs to run into that mixer even if I wanted to. So this gives me a way to mix audio from any of these individual devices at, in the actual audio mixer, and most importantly, making separate mixes depending on whether I'm sending a copy to the speakers in the room or back to the main stream. So that's been a fantastic upgrade to the studio, which I did now quite a while ago. Moving on down the rack, uh, down below the audio mixer is a power distribution thing. So this is a eight output power strip, but it's got an ethernet jack because what that lets me do is switch things on and off remotely. The reason I got that is because some of the devices that I have in here don't like to be powered on all the time. Sometimes they crash. Um, one of the ones that is a frequent offender is the web presenter. It will often just hang and I need to reboot it in order to fix it. So rather than having to go back there and pull a cable, I can remotely from the web page just go ahead and flick it on and off and it reboots and then everything works. Below that is a battery. That is a UPS showing me uh, how much load the whole thing is using and it also provides some minutes of backup power when there are glitches. Uh, also, it is a conditioner, so it's if there's spikes in the line, it doesn't damage the gear. So that's saved me a couple times already when there's been storms that don't knock out the power for like a whole long time, but just long enough to, to blip that would have caused things to reboot. So that's the rack. Um, I'm going to avoid showing you the back because it's a giant mess. Well, okay, we can take a quick peek. <laughs> quick peek behind the rack. I really need to do better at cable management, but it's hard, especially when it's that close to the wall. I guess one thing that you can't see really is that there's actually a breakout panel on the back. So a lot of the cables to things are uh, passed through into that panel plugged in, which is better than having the wires go all the way in, but it's not perfect. Um, I really need to clean this up, but honestly, it's so much work that I probably will never do it. So there's a bunch of stuff on this top shelf that are like things like converters. I've got like a decimator. I've got a bunch of black magic converters. I've got like the pro converts. I've got a unify camera receiver. A lot of stuff like that is up there. And then I've got a new unify 10 gig switch here. This is giving me a 10 gig link to 
the, the main rack uh, while also providing 10 gig to the computer. And then this is a one gig that goes to the main network switch, which is back there. Let's get out of that tangled mess of wires and talk about a little bit of the, about the top of the desk or rack. Not super organized, mainly because there's some in progress projects right now. Uh, this is a Thunderbolt enclosure for a deck link card. So right now I've got a deck link with the, the four SDI ins and outs. And that's so I can do things like zoom ISO, bring multiple guests into the stream. Um, these are my little SD card holders on the top. I've got a wireless receiver that's kind of just sitting back here. Uh, this is the transmitter for it, so I can always bring a wireless camera into the stream. This ATEM Mini Pro SDI actually has four inputs from the main ATEM, giving me the ability to bring in four inputs into here for doing things like ISO recording. So if I want to record multiple cameras around the, the studio, I can just choose what gets sent into here from the, the ATEM and record four angles at once, since this is the only four channel recorder I have. Um, I also use this for the BTS stream for members, so I will go to this sort of wide shot of the whole room, which is that little camera up there, and I'll do that for the BTS stream, switching between like my main camera and then that wide camera. So this is the separate encoder for that purpose. This is the in-progress project panel. This is actually the doorbell system for the house. That is a different channel that I talk about that on house files. I'll leave a link down to that below. But this is going to be for the front door. This goes into the, the house in the living room. And you can like call the front door. If I press the doorbell, then that rings and a picture shows up from the camera there. Then you can answer the door and unlock it. It's pretty cool. Um, you can hear my phone ringing over there too, because it's all part of the same system. Okay, so that's the rack. Um, above the rack is this TV. This is a 42 inch Samsung frame TV. It's not actually mounted to anything. It's just sitting on that ledge because I have not, I'm not actually sold as to whether that's a good position for it, but uh, it's, it's fun. So this lets me have something, you know, big in the background, or again, because it's actually connected into the ATEM, I can just change what's going to show up on there. So I could make it show a big view of whatever I'm filming, or I could make it my logo, or I can make it show the multi view or the big map. And that I think is it for this area. So let's see what's next. Let's just move over to the right a little bit and talk about this shelf. This is mostly decorative and this is in the background of my shot. It's mostly, mostly decorative and a little bit functional. So I do have this camera up here, which is like the wide shot of the room. It's not a high quality camera, but it is nice and small and good wide angle and SDI. Uh, I've got a little digger up here. I've got the road beanie, which uh, I got when I went up to down to LA for a special visit to visit the people from road. A little Alaska Airlines plane. That is the plane that I have most often flown in on trips. I've got a couple of little fun decorations up here. Uh, and then of course the old Mac, old Game Boy, the globe, which this used to be a lot more visible in my background. This was when I first started streaming. I got this globe and started putting pins everywhere that viewers were joining from, which has been pretty fun. And then I digitized it, which means it's a lot more dynamic now and you can have faces on the map and stuff. That's where that came from. But this was the original version of it. My old ATEM Television Studio original, which I bought ages ago. It was the first one I started using for events. Uh, this shelf is a combination of organized decorative storage and just functional storage. So I've got things like the Obspot cameras and the Mevo cameras. Usually there's a, an ATEM or two back there. Sometimes there's just monitors. Here's the two yellow boxes with their cages. Um, and then here's a little light to make it look a little better and look a little bit less chaotic. And that's actually got an aperture bulb in it too. So I can change the color of that. Once we get down a little bit lower, it starts turning into more functional. So I've got the 3D printer here. So this has moved back down here. Now that I have air conditioning in here, I can actually make prints when it's not, when it's hot out, cause I can cool the air down to the right temperature. I haven't actually plugged back that camera in since I moved the printer back down, but that's a camera to, to keep an eye on what's been printing. That actually is SDI also into the, into the whole setup. Um, over here, I've got these shelves that are drawers that are mostly organized. Um, this is, the least organized of all my storage, but it's not too bad. Like I've got things like lights in here. Um, this one's full of like rigging stuff, stands, cameras. This is a bunch of the, the PK one products. 
Um, and then down here is like extra ATEMs and Yolo boxes. This on the floor sometimes lives up on that shelf, but I was actually filming with it recently, so I had it out. And then the bottom of that is just a giant disaster of power strips, filament, and giant spools of extra fiber HDMI and USB because they were way longer than I needed. Um, but that's this, that's the shelf. Behind the shelf, you notice I have a, a tube light. That's uh, one of three in here. That is um, just a, at an interesting angle, kind of matching the angles of everything else in the studio. I've got another one of those over in that other corner, lighting up that corner. And then of course the one for the floor for the background. Speaking of background, this is the background of uh, my main shots. I've got these kind of three little Edison bulbs hanging from the ceiling and the wall is actually gray. If I turn that light off, you'll see the more natural color. So I can just go ahead and turn that floor light off. And this is the gray that the wall is. It is actually um, middle gray, 18% gray. And that's so that it isn't too bright or too dark. And if I throw color on it, it's not uh, just kind of oversaturated. Depending on the camera settings and the other lighting, I can actually make it look black or white, depending on what I'm filming. A few more things on this side before we move to the rest of the room. I mentioned that corner briefly a second ago. That corner is mostly a shelf and also then a giant mess. The shelf is actually pretty reasonably well organized if I can just get, get over there. A recent thing I did to the shelf is buy all these little drawers for it and organize them. So. Up at the top, I've got like the heavy, heavy stuff. So big, big tripods, things like that. Uh, this is mostly like boxes. Some, some of these are full, some of these are empty boxes that I need to save for whatever reason. Uh, these are the new drawers. So I've got things like a bunch of GoPro accessories there. I've got a bunch of different webcams in here of various sorts, small monitors. Um, <laughs> down here, things like measuring tools, sound meter, USB cable tester. Here's all my wireless HDMI and SDI things. I've got, this one's just called miscellaneous audio <laughs> and small mics. So a lot of those little on-camera mics, HDMI players, um, encoders. These are all like the tiny little lights. Anyway, it's been nice having these, oh, all the converters that I don't need anymore because I went full SDI. It's been nice having these organized because they're at least easier to find now. Um, this is a box of older gear, like my old television studio, poor thing is in there. Uh, we've got a really old audio interface too. And then some of these strips that I haven't been using, a bunch of little miscellaneous parts. And down at the bottom is um, bags, things like light bags, um, tripod stands, and then my accordion, which does not have a room, a space of its own. Um, so not super well organized, but then this is the disaster. And I really need to fix this, but it's complicated. So that pile, it's like mostly one stack. That is actually stuff that is going into the house. So it's things like the ceiling speakers or the Sonos amps, the door lock system, uh, video distribution. I've been buying stuff incrementally uh, and I it now just has to live here until I can put it in, which should only be a few more months, hopefully. Um, this stack of boxes is just from moving and I need to just deal with it. It's not, it's not good. Um, this is my fun wall calendar. I, I've been making these for multiple years now where it's just a full year at a glance. Every row is a month and it's a fun way to visualize the year just all in one go. This is still 2023 because I haven't, uh, switched it over to 2024 yet, even though January is now over, but I keep track of things like trips to various places with little plane stickers or when I hit certain subscriber milestones or every time I publish a video or go live, I'll put a little stamp on here. Uh, even the house files videos get their own little sticker and it's fun to just kind of keep track of how the year is progressing on this. So I do need to get 2024s up now because we are now a 12th of the way through the year, 6%. Uh, I got a little iPad over here, which is showing me my home assistant dashboard. So this is showing me the temperature in various places. So outside temp, kitchen temperature upstairs, studio temperature here, carbon dioxide, <laughs> things like, oh, even the radon here, which when it starts raining, we get more radon gas here, uh, which is concerning. And of course, AQI, which right now is great. Uh, this little phone is part of the intercom system. Again, it's not, doesn't actually do much yet because the rest of it is not set up, but this will be able to call the front door or ring when somebody rings a doorbell, if I can get it to stop ringing when that happens too be nice. Moving on to the thing next to the giant stack. 
So next to this ugly stack of boxes is some shelving. This is one of the first ones I got for the studio, this little five drawer with one cabinet on the left. So that's got things like little bits and bobs for mounting things. It's got, oh, I don't even know what that one is. Ugh. Some of these are organized, some of these are not. This is like microphones. Uh, some, yeah, not super well organized. I could do better. Printer. This is mostly the printer station now. So I've got the color printer and uh, cutter. This is actually a silhouette cutter for doing stickers. So a lot of the stickers on the wall over there are things I've made. So inkjet printer, you put a vinyl sheet in the back, print it out here, stick it back in the cutter, chop the stickers up. It's a lot of fun. Um, then I've got my Ikea uh, cabinets, which moved from the house. So that used to be the background of my videos uh, way back in the day before I moved into this studio. And these cabinets had to come with me into the, into the studio. So they live here now. And they're not all well organized, but they are somewhat organized. So I've got actually like some food in there, but then I've got like shipping envelopes and labels and stuff, office stuff. And the books up there are mostly decorative. That's why they're in color order, not any kind of subject or thing order that makes sense. Um, and that's why they're also the highest ones on the shelf. Okay, that is the end of this, this side of the studio. So let's take a look around one more time before we go to the other side. Definitely a mess. I wish it weren't so cluttered in here, but I've got some plans that I am considering. So I want to at least capture the state of things now so I can always come back to it because I have been using this. This is how I've been using the space, even though it's definitely a disaster on this side. So just pretend like all you see is this and it's a little bit better. So moving over to this side and the other side of the curtain, this is my office side. This is the side that I use for just my day to day work and meetings and things like that. This desk is from the, the old house, the old apartment. This is actually something I built from scratch several years ago with my dad. He was very helpful, had all the tools. Uh, I used to have it on a standing desk base and it turns out this desk is just so heavy. It's all solid wood plus all the stuff on it that it was wobbling the standing desk base. And now I've got it on top of these Ikea cabinets and it's fantastic, it's super solid. The special thing about the desk is that there's actually a spot below it for a little keyboard and you can push this top back when it's not full of stuff to reveal the keyboard. Anyway, this is my main desk. Uh, it's, it's nice. It's nice. It's a good size, nice and big. Fits my ultra wide monitor, has two uh, 3U 19 inch rack spaces and then the space in the middle, which is just for stuff. Uh, I've got my Mac mini in there at the moment. And yeah, this is where I have my ultra wide monitor. The reason I have the ultra wide here is because I just like working on an ultra wide for my day to day stuff, but this is not good for sharing on a stream because it's not the right shape. And if I ran this in HD, it would be silly. So this is a super high res and this is great for long timelines of video and two or three web browsers or whatever. So it's great. And then I've got these little lights up on top for meetings and I've got now two cameras, which cause I keep trying new cameras for this setup. This is the Elgato face cam, which I've honestly not been super impressed with. And now I started using the Obsbot uh, tiny camera, the new one. And this is actually surprisingly much better quality than the face cam. But this is just my, uh, my meeting setup. I usually just have a virtual background because it's really just the curtain back there. So it's not that nice anyway. Uh, over on the right, I've got another spot for a cell phone so I can just set my phone down here to charge. Kind of hangs off there. Um, I've got uh, actually a Blackmagic cloud pod is inside that. So I've got a little monitor for it showing me the stats here. And this monitor shows me the cameras from the house so I can see. Sometimes I'll, I'll switch it to like what's going on outside the house so I can watch the construction from here or I can watch the cats to see if they're sleeping or if they need attention. Um, so I can just change the, the camera layouts that's up there by using the computer. Not super organized down here yet. This is just a power strip and then empty slots. I used to have like video gear running in here, which I'm thinking about doing again. So that might change soon, but for now it's just kind of a mess. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi that used to be for showing the cameras up there, but I switched it out and now it's actually the Unify uh, viewport that's running that monitor. And that Raspberry Pi is actually now uh, just doing my time lapses of the construction. So this little drive is where all they, they all get stored, but it's saving snapshots from all the cameras around the, the lot 
into, uh, into folders there than building time lapses from it. Over here, so under the desk, I've got my the Blackmagic Cloud Pod for uh, storage. I actually don't use it as permanent storage. I use it just as working storage to work with my editor because it then syncs up to Google. So it's actually syncing to my Google Cloud where I have two terabytes on Google Cloud and then I can drop things in here on my 10 gig network and then it'll upload it eventually to Google. We've got a Mac Mini, the original one, original M1 Mac Mini down here that I was using in my streaming setup a while for a while, but this now just has a permanent home here. I don't use it all the time, but it's nice to just have a computer here without a laptop, but for work stuff or if I'm editing videos, I'll put a laptop down here and plug it in. This is my KVM, which is this one wire that I unplug from this hub. And then this hub runs the stream deck and my network and the SD card reader and the most importantly, the monitor. So it is just one cable to unplug and switch to my laptop when I dock the laptop here. It's not ideal, but it's not too bad. Um, eventually I'm gonna move that power cord to the backside so you don't see it, but this is because it was, uh, I was trying it out. So I got a little CalDigit hub here for um, SD card and monitor again in the back and other USB things like the webcams. Um, this is my new, new webcam, so it's my Obspot Tiny, which is a trial run, so I'm probably gonna permanently install that back there. Um, I've got desk speakers hidden again, just under the monitor for music from here. Those run to the computer also, or I can just Bluetooth play to them. Kind of a weird thing to do with a desk is to put an Ikea shelf on top, but I actually like it a lot. It's uh, it's given me a lot more storage in that corner. So it's a one by four Ikea Calyx, and I've got a door here, which opens up to these little tiny drawers. So I've got things like all my dongles for video stuff. I've got uh, pens, I've got stickers and all sorts of stuff in there. Um, these are just like for files. I've got a bunch of construction project stuff going on here or just like blank checks. And that one's not organized, so I'm not going to open it. And then like old uh, taxes and stuff at the top. Um, this is the doorbell I mentioned earlier. This is the permanent home for this doorbell. This is going to be tied into the, the main house. So when somebody rings the front door of the main house, this rings. But also you can call doorbell to doorbell and make phone calls. So from the rooftop, for example, I could actually call I could call the rooftop from here or they can call me down here. There's no camera on this. This one's just audio, but there is a camera on the front door one, which I can see when it rings here. Down in, in here, these are not super well organized yet. So TBD working on that, but at least I do have, these two are organized. This is all like my actual important files. And these are like hard drives and SD cards. Um, under the desk is a giant mess because again, construction. So some of the stuff is going into the house. I've got like the power monitoring system in a box there because it came from Canada. It was super slow. I had no idea how long it was going to take. Um, I also have a new battery, house battery, to run appliances and stuff. After the last ice storm, I was like, we should really have backup power of some sort that is so we can have hot water or some amount of heat. So that's a new, a new battery pack for the house. Um, and yeah, that's the desk. So it's a it's a stool. I used to have it as a standing desk or up and down, and I just found myself not moving up and down ever. So I decided to permanently mount it to these file cabinets. And I it is at a good height for me to stand and use a laptop, or I can sit on this stool if I want to sit down for a little while. But yeah, that's my day to day. Over on the right side is a little bit of a mess, a little bit of organization. Um, these are all the um, lighting things I got from Small Rig when I did the job for them now a while ago so i should really deal with that i don't i i use some of them permanently but the other they just live here otherwise and i got like my helmet for my bike because i don't have a good spot for it um this one is probably the most organized shelf i've got like a drawer full of tiny cameras which is like the dji that i'm holding now i've got a drawer full of lenses i've got the scanner up here and a printer and this printer i i'm surprised every time i think about how old it is i'm surprised at how old it is and i bought it I don't even know, like 15 years ago or more, I think at this point, and it's great. Um, and this is a great scanner too, sheet fed scanner, so I can scan in receipts or mail and it just auto saves onto the, the shared folder. I don't have to load a computer or anything. I just go here, stick a sheet in, and I can email myself or Lily or save it to my sync folder just with buttons on it. It's great. Um, these were the original storage I had for the studio and I do not like this. So this one's Ikea and these are great. 
This one is, uh, I think it's Winsome. I found it on Amazon. It's not super solid. You can tell there's a problem here because they're not at the same height. That's because the wheels on the bottom of the left one broke. And so it's tilted forward and I can't deal with it until I empty the whole thing out and just take off the wheels because I don't roll it around. So that's what I should do. But I should do it to both of them and that's just like a whole day project. <laughs> Over here is things like cables. So I've got STI cables on the bottom, HDMI cables there, which I really need to organize. USB with which I really need to organize. And as you can tell from this pile of USBs over here, I have too many USB cables and I am drowning in them and nobody should ever own this many USB cables. So I need to really deal with that. Should probably just get rid of most of them at this point, honestly. Uh, and then this one's network cables, which again, I don't use most of these. I like these thin ones the best. So I should really just get rid of the rest of these ugly fat ones. This box is just full of stuff for the house again. This is most of the doorbird system and the uh, other, other house projects. This is my unorganized pile of batteries and this is the organized pile of batteries. I'm still so pleased with the battery wall. I've got a little bit of room left to fill it up still, but I, I made these little, I 3D printed all these little brackets to hold the chargers on the wall so that I can, and they're all specially built for the individual chargers. So. I can have a charger for each type of battery that I use and then just pop them on the wall. They're always plugged into these power bricks. And it's just a really nice way to just have quick access to all the chargers. I need to make one more for this, which is my new Lumix camera. So it's been a while. I should just do that. <laughs> but I also have this little shelf, which is giving me like 60 watts or something of USB power. So I can charge iPhones or other batteries or lights and other things like that off of this on this little nice shelf and then miscellaneous batteries up there, which are not super well organized, but I guess, oh well. And then, yeah, uh, still a bit disorganized over here. I would really like to clean it up better, uh, but there's just always so much to do and I don't know where to find room for all this. So we'll get back to that someday, someday. Um, over on the left side here, this is my bike parking because <laughs> don't have the, the actual bike parking built yet in the house. so. This is uh, where my bike lives right now. At least it's small. It lives behind my desk. Can't really see it on the camera, which is nice. Um, I have been making progress on this stack of boxes. It used to be two wide and four tall, and now it's down to just one box, which I think is actually video gear. It's actually the podcast gear from the podcast set for House Files. So it's got like the three Lumix G7s, an A10 Mini, an audio interface, a microphone, stuff like that that we were using for the House Files. So I can we don't have a space to set that up again so i don't know what i can do about it until then so that's the office side of the studio let's move over to the messy side as if this wasn't messy enough part of me doesn't want to deal with this right now because as soon as we can move into the big house next door then a lot of the stuff is just going to move over there too not all of it because a lot of this is living here permanently but at least there will be some room for some more stuff over there okay accessing this door this is a door to the unfinished garage side of the studio. So the entire room I, I have, I'm, we've been looking at used to look like this with unfinished drywall and just concrete bottom half wall. You might recognize this is why I have a ledge in the studio is because this is what was inside that side as well. I finished off that side, didn't bother finishing off this side just because it had too much stuff in it and I had nowhere to put it, but also I don't really care about this side as much. So this is the storage and tool side. So there's the nice studio so you can tell the lighting is very different in there compared to here. Uh, and this is, I'm so happy with, I did this. This was a project a couple of years ago of installing these shelves on this wall. So worth it. This is all the container, container store shelving alpha, their alpha line. It's actually really interesting. It's all hung from a single track up at the ceiling and then you hang these vertical ones off of it. You can screw them in on the bottom, which I did do. Uh, you don't have to though. And then all these things just get attached and it's super modular. So you can build it super customized, uh, make it work exactly the way you want. And it's, it's been great. So I've got all these drawers over here for like small tools, screws, soldering supplies. I made room for that mini fridge. This is so that I can have snacks or drinks down here. Uh, which was more important when I was living not here and commuting because I could have lunches up here. Like I could bring lunch stick into the freezer or use the microwave up there to heat it up. Um, less important now that the kitchen is directly upstairs, but still nice to be able to grab drinks out of here and not have to go outside and up around the house to get that. Uh, all these little 
drawers and shelves and stuff are mostly organized, uh, mostly labeled, and at least I know what's in all of them. Uh, some of these are temporary, like for our extra kitchen storage because we don't have enough room in the kitchen, so that box is going to move eventually. Um, a lot of the stuff up there is for like the old solar panels, which eventually I'm going to send back eventually, so that'll free up that whole top shelf. Uh, a lot of the stuff at the top is also like bags for the gears. So I've got this hanging rack for like you can see the ATEM Mini Extreme boxes, the Constellation For Me box. That's just in case I ever need to sell it or ship it back to get worked on or whatever. That tub is full of like other electronics boxes. And then there's like, you really can't see it, but there's tripod bags and light stand bags and stuff up there too. At least it's out of the way. Um, but yeah, this is the, the storage side. We've got uh, room for all the tall things back by this utility sink, kind of. Organized notes, not or am I, who am I kidding? But it's got like laundry and cleaning stuff over here. Um, but you can see these little boxes. This is all my audio cables. These are power cables. This is miscellaneous drone parts, bunch of PK1 accessories, all my OAuth shirts for that course in case I need to reshoot stuff, which I should probably do again pretty soon. Bunch of ham radio gear. There's some more parts for the house. The old doorknobs from the from the old house all live here. Until I figure out what to do with them. Ar Arduino electronics. I've got some parts for the laser cutter. Laser cutter. I've got like scraps of wood for laser cutting, things like that. So a bunch of 3D printed, uh, 3D printing filament down here, and more light stands and coffee pots and miscellaneous stuff down there. Uh, over on the left, we've got tools. So I've got my actually decently organized set of power tools now. I've got like nail gun, jigsaw, other cutters, drills, screwdrivers. Uh, I, this is not a charging wall, but it is at least a place to hang the batteries that are easier to get. Uh, the charger is over on this side and I just charge one at a time and then put them back when they're done. Um, I've got other bits and tool bits and drill bits and things up here. All the little router bits live on the side here. Um, up at the top, I've got a laser cutter hanging off there, and then I've got some paint cans up there on that top shelf. It's just a random shelf I had that I was like, you know what? I could use some more storage to get things off of the floor. Uh, that's like a little mini shop vac. And then over here, I've got a uh, pressure washer and a saw, which are all powered from those DeWalt batteries. I just decided to go all in on DeWalt, and I'm pretty happy with it, honestly. That saw has been fantastic ever since I got it. I just built a little mini shed for Lily's parents. Maybe I'll insert some photos of that here. But we did that last weekend. That was a lot of fun. I got to use that saw a lot for that. Um, this stuff I should figure out what to do with because some of it's like shelving that I could either install or just get rid of. Some of it's scraps. This is actually the scrap tile from the studio. And this is scrap of the flooring from the studio. There's like two boxes of it, which is a lot. I don't know how we overbought it so much. I don't know what to do with it because like I probably don't need to replace it ever and there's not enough to replace the whole thing anyway but i'm also not going to finish this room so i don't know what to do with these scraps this bicycle in the way is lily's extra bike her extra cycle um she doesn't ride it very often so it just lives here it's like hanging from the, there and vertical i actually sold my extra cycle because i really wasn't using it sold that a couple of months ago and i hope it's getting more use now um, she is on the fence about selling this one, but leaning towards probably yes. This is, I don't know why that's there. <laughs> this is the laser cut that I used, for, that I got from Adam Stack uh, to do the project of building the, the Chaos Router. You can see I've got some scraps left in here from that. Um, doing some test cuts. So that lives on this table here with some of the accessories for it down below. And then uh, I've got this really nice little workbench. This thing is so cool. It's, it just folds out. You can fold it out in here and do some quick projects and fold it back up or take it outside and it's super easy to carry around. It's great. Um, this is also where Lily parks her bike when she comes in. So she's out right now, which is why I can walk around in here, but she'll park her bike in here and then go out, out that door uh, to go to work. I would like to get this side a little bit cleaner, but honestly, this is so much better than it used to be. So that's progress. That is progress. And the last thing uh, I want to show you is the server closet here. This is server closet and water heater room. Um, it's semi-organized. I recently got this shelf to put all the paint cans and cleaning supplies and stuff on it. Another backup battery. 
and um, little lanterns. I went a little bit nuts buying batteries and lights and stuff in case the power goes out. Anyway, um, that's where this lives. Some ladders, step stools, brooms, things like that. Uh, the main circuit breaker panel is back here as well. I've got my little shop or my little vacuum for the studio. Um, and then up above, actually in the corner, this is interesting. This is like a non-conventional way to mount servers. So in the corner, I've got all of my little um, Intel NUC servers, which is what I use for everything. So some of them are like running VMs, media servers, whatever, a bunch of hard drives. And they're just sitting on this shelf, but I actually really like it because it's easy to access them. So it's a lot easier to go into here and, and move stuff around than if they were all hiding like they are up there. This is the main rack of all the gear that's running the house, another battery. Uh, camera recorder. This is the main router, Dream Machine Pro. This is my new 10 gig switch, which is definitely overkill, as you can tell by the fact that most of them are empty. But this will let me eventually run 10 gig into any of the ports around the studio uh, and other gear that I put in here eventually. This is just a regular 1 gig, 48 port switch, 24 port switch. I can probably consolidate these two at this point now that, now that I've got a 10 gig. And then I've got power injectors up there, a bunch of Synology NASes for backups. Um, the LTE modem is up there, the fiber modem is up there, another battery pack to run more gear, uh, a lot of a lot of gear in that rack. Uh, and that is just the beginning because the main house is going to have probably more than that. Um, over on this side is the skeleton storage. They were our Halloween decorations and they live in this closet now, <laughs> as well as the water heater, which I'm now realizing is kind of old because this was built in 2008. So it's very possible that I might need to replace it soon. And if I do, I wonder if I should replace it with a tankless because it'll be smaller and free up all that room. Uh, anyway, one construction note, when they come in and do the uh, replace the power, they're going to have to actually run power from that outside wall into the ceiling here and push a big fat power line all the way through the ceiling into that corner and run a cable down into the breaker panel because right now the panel is being fed power from uh, the other side of the house and we have to remove that electric meter. So that's going to be a fun project. I'm not looking forward to taking all that stuff out of there to make room for the electricians. So that is the messy side. Let's come back to the clean side. Clean-er side. To wrap this up, this is where I spend most of my time. So a couple notes before we wrap up. This is the state of things right now as it exists today. Again, I'm not saying that I love every single thing about this setup. I'm always looking for ways to improve it, always looking for things I can do to make things easier for me. Most of the reason this is set up this way is because I really have optimized for making it so I can just come in, sit down, start a live stream without a lot of fuss and things are just ready to go. The cameras are, are ready in the right spot. I don't have to set up lights or tear down lights. That's really the reason for a lot of this stuff. As I have been switching into using the space for my day-to-day -day work, office work over on this side, I have found that I would prefer this to look a lot cleaner and a lot more open. So I think what I'll be doing this year is looking for ways to improve that. I'm going to do things like try to tuck cameras farther against the walls. I might try to like move that whole thing all the way up against the wall. Um, use longer lenses for things, not have things in the middle of the floor. I don't know where my little focus helper is going to live. This little head on a stick is uh, creepy, but it's very useful because what, what I can do is like move her into the shot where I stand or sit and then I can focus on, I can like go back here and position the camera right or uh, I was doing that earlier today when I was moving these cameras around. I was like, oh, well, is my head going to be in the shot or am I going to be clipping my head? So I'll put her where she goes and then I can yeah, focus cameras on the right distance without having to guess um, or set position things right on these little tripods. So that's a little helper, but no, she doesn't have a good home right now. So yeah. Anyway, I'm just rambling at this point. 
let's go ahead and wrap this up. So thanks to all my channel members for your ongoing support and thanks to everybody who has sent in a super chat during my live streams. And thanks to you for watching because every minute you watch does actually make a difference. I really appreciate that I'm able to build out the space and continue trying out new gear and to have fun with it. And it's all only possible thanks to you all for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below or join one of my weekly live streams on Sundays. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.